everyone, welcome back. We are on session 13 of Prayers That Heal the Heart. Today we're going to be working on inner vows. We are going to be journaling today, so if you don't have your journal with you, you should just pause and um, go and get it. Okay, let me open up in prayer. Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, thank you once again, Heavenly Father, for softening all the hearts of those who are watching today, Heavenly Father, and for softening my heart as well, Heavenly Father. Thank you that they've come to be able to receive understanding from you, Heavenly Father, by your Holy Spirit, Heavenly Father. Open up them to understand the things you want them to understand about the vows they've committed that are not godly, Heavenly Father. Speak to us today. Anoint my mouth to be able to say the things you want me to say, Heavenly Father. Let us receive all these things by faith. By your Son's mighty name, Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Okay, let me share my screen. Okay, session 13, Prayers That Heal the Heart. Thus far, we have done, um, let's see. Okay, we are on number four, inner vow. So we did generational sins and curses, which essentially is your family history and um, the things you can receive as a result of the sins that your, your parents or all of your relatives in your family line have committed um, and that were unrepented for. You can receive the consequences of those of those sins ungodly soul ties it was related to interpersonal relationships um, holy spirit has led us to cut off ungodly soul ties um, with you know with with those that we've come into contact with personally um, now and in our past and um, last time we did negative expectations or negative faith um, so that was essentially an understanding of what um, negative expectations you have in your mind, what's, what are generally used to be unconscious. God is revealing those things to us within, within this series. So what negative things do you believe generally because of lived experience of negative things, um, things that didn't turn out, things that were disappointments. So you have a set of ideas that you, that you think the world operates by, but in fact, those are lies and and god is revealing those to you so that you can repent of them that means change your mind about them and then turn towards him so today inner vows um which are essentially they correspond to number three negative faith because they're the action part or the inaction part um of of the of the negative beliefs that you used to have so inner vows, um, they're essentially promises to yourself um, or statements to yourself that you, that you have made as a result of having negative faith. So as a result of having ungodly beliefs. Um, and so last session, we talked about how to replace those ungodly beliefs by divine truth about yourself, about your surroundings, about people, about your future. Even, even about your past. So we've worked on that and Holy Spirit should have led you, um, you know, to, to an understanding of some of the beliefs that you used to have. And now you're turning away from those beliefs, but you also need to, to walk that out. That means do actions that correspond with it. So inner vows or promises to yourself are generally made at the unconscious level. They're laid down in the unconscious level. That's generally at the spiritual level, um, and they need revealing to you. They need to be made apparent to you. As a consequence of these inner promises that you've made, you actually do actions or don't do actions as a result of that. And um, it's often kind of linked. They're coupled. You have a negative belief, and then you, you essentially do an action that, that, that corresponds with that, that is in line with that, or you don't do something that is in line with that as well. And I'll give you some examples so that becomes more clear. So faith is the negative expectations. Um, that's negative faith. You can also have positive faith. Um, so negative expectations. And then 
um, works flow from that. So works are the inner vows and resulting actions. So faith and works always have a correspondence. Inner vows are uh, result in action or inaction uh, because of the negative faith, the negative beliefs that you have had. So like faith works, faith without works is dead and works without faith yield nothing or, or worse. So that's in the Bible where we talk about you don't just believe something um, in your head. You also have to do a corresponding action that essentially testifies to that belief. So um, faith without works, faith without action is dead. It doesn't do anything. It doesn't yield anything. And sometimes it can just it can be worse than just yielding nothing. It can also kind of be a detriment to you as well or, or whatever situation that you're a part of. So it's not that there's just a lack of action. Um, it can actually um, be a stalling or a, a barrier to, to God's purpose. Generally, it is. Um, so an inner vow is something that we promise, and then it's, a, it's actually kind of more like a seed towards action. There's a corresponding action. And that action that you take or don't take um, releases sin energy or blessing. So previously, when we had negative expectations, negative faith, our corresponding inner vows were seeding an action that was going to essentially release more sin energy into, into, you know, into yourself as well as into your surroundings. And we want to learn to do the opposite of that. But right now we want to examine what inner vows you've made um, that have been seeding seed sin energy around you um, because of your actions or inactions. So um, what you expect will uh, what you expect will be released as an action or lack thereof. And it sounds repetitive, but that's what I'm trying to come across today to tell you that. Uh, when you have a negative belief, you have a corresponding promise to yourself to do something or not do something. And that, that can be realized, that can be manifested within your life as a result of it. So what you expect can then happen. So a good example of this in the Bible is in Numbers 14, 27 to 28. The context of this is that the Israelites were in the wilderness with Moses and um, they had negative faith about, about um, their survival, about, you know, where God was taking them, about not having a good supply. And this, and this is what they would um, like, this is, this is kind of their behavior. And, and God was angry at this. And so he, so he says to them, to the Israelites in general through Moses, how long shall I bear with this evil congregation which murmur against me? So God is saying, how long can I take the fact that my children that I've brought out of um, Egypt from slavery, how long can I, can I bear them this evil gathering? And evil simply means to not be, um, you know, meeting the the kind of behavior or belief or action that that typically god would do so it's like evil is as is, is, is sinful missing the mark on what god would want you to do think or feel in that situation so they were in an evil congregation that were murmuring against god and god says i've heard the murmurings of the children of israel against me so they're murmuring against the father that's brought them out of out of out of egypt out of slavery and he's heard them say unto them, as I, as I, as true, as truly as I live, said the Lord, as ye have spoken in my ears, will I do to you. So that's a mouthful. But anyway, God was essentially saying, because you've kept murmuring and murmuring and murmuring, complaining, 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 um, and God has heard that, he will essentially allow that happen allow that to happen to the Israelites in the in the wilderness and you you know that the Israelites did perish um, that generation of them did perish and they weren't able to see the to see the promised land because they just didn't believe it and they kept on not trusting God 
So they kept on repeating it, that they were going to die in the wilderness, that they weren't going to be provided for. And even though God intended for them to, to come into the promised land, because they kept murmuring and taking corresponding action to the murmuring, meaning grumbling and then um, complaining and like believing that they were going to die there, it actually happened to them. They didn't expect supply from God. They didn't, um, you know, see opportunities around them to be able to, you know, have hope for, for the promised land. They didn't look eagerly towards that. They just kept on grumbling and said slavery is better than this. They were essentially grumbling all the time. And um, because of that, they actually did perish. So even though God had intended for them to come into the promised land, um, their own belief system, as well as murmuring against God and their corresponding action or lack of action, led them to pass. Um, and another example of this would be in Nazareth. So Jesus, uh, Jesus of Nazareth, so, so Jesus, um, it's recorded in the New Testament that he didn't see any miracles happen in Nazareth. And, um, and that's because Jesus was raised there, but the people who were there in Nazareth who knew him as a boy and knew him as a, a carpenter, um, knew him as a, as a simple son, quote unquote, of, of, of Joseph, um, they couldn't believe that this could be like the Messiah. And so they didn't expect from him, uh, you know, miracles. And even though he did many miracles everywhere else, he couldn't perform them there because of their negative belief system about Jesus. And so they didn't, they probably wouldn't approach him to ask him for healing because everywhere else people had a positive expectation, had positive faith about Jesus because they'd heard so many things. So they heard it in their ears and then they believed it. And then they did action towards going towards Jesus and asking for healing and believing that there was going to be healing done for them. And the people of Nazareth didn't have that mindset. They, they essentially would refuse to believe the things that they heard about Jesus because of what they saw him as, as, as a boy growing up. So their lack of belief and their lack of action as a result of that in terms of approaching him or believing that he was the Messiah, that led them to not have the things God had promised for them. Um, so their inaction, you know, towards... Um, you know, Jesus being based on an inner vow that they had made an inner promise to say, I can't believe that, 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 that Jesus from, you know, growing up, I can't believe that he's the one that God has ordained to, to, to save us all. They couldn't believe it. And so they made it a promise within themselves unconsciously and then didn't act towards that, that. And so that, that led them to miss out on things that God had probably, you know, wanted for them that were blessings. So we can actually miss out on what God wants for us because, because we don't have um, the, the, the action that, that corresponds with that. So this also works in the positive, it, you know, just as I said, so like men in the Bible, women and men in the Bible who had great faith, um, they, they took corresponding action and as a result, they witnessed things um, that, that God had promised them. So Abraham, Joshua, Moses, so they witnessed things because they believed in God and they had a, a positive faith about God, a positive expectation with God. And because of that, they endured, um, you know, difficult circumstances, but because they hung on to that promise, they had that, you know, inner belief that God was going to deliver those things. Um, they saw it come to pass in their lives and in other people's lives. Um, and even if there's a, because, because God is eternal, he, he stands outside of time. Even if there was a promise that God made um, and you didn't, and they didn't see it in their life, it doesn't mean that it's not going to happen because we talked about like the, um, the spiritual law of delay as well. And that works also in, in um, the positive too. So sometimes if you don't actually sit, like witness it during your lifetime, it doesn't mean it's not going to happen because when you pass away, you go to heaven and, and there's still things going on, you know, on, on earth that could have that take place too. Um, so anyway, we want to add in, in accordance with God's promises and based on the spiritual, like kind of truth that God has revealed to you about your, your, your negative beliefs.